guys and gals. Today is the first day of the trip all over Lake Superior. <laughs> I'd say uh, just Isle Royal, but I think we're going to end up some other places too. Probably Standard Rock, probably Manitou again, quite possibly revisiting Devil's Island to get up on the island. Uh, if that doesn't happen on this trip, it will happen really soon before the snow comes for sure. So, uh, yeah, you, you know, you just always got to decide to get something started. And this is going to be such a big trip. And I just keep thinking, well, I'll start tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> well, I'm leaving now. I'm warming up the motor and all loaded up and got the last minute things at the dollar store and what have you. So how about if I turn the phone around and we'll just get this thing started. Okay guys, so we are taking the uh, Hughescraft, the fairly new, well new to me Hughescraft uh, 16 Sportsman all over Lake Superior. I think it can get the job done. Got a good weather window if I can believe it, which I, I tend to. Uh, let me show you really quick how I kind of set this up. So my Yeti cooler is under there full of ice, full of, you know, enough food, but I, I hope to supplement the menu on this trip substantially with lake trout and possibly other types of fish I catch. Um, got all my bedding back there. There's my kind of thick mat. Got a nice sleeping bag with an extra blanket. A nice, uh, oh, what is that? That's a, um, that's a, uh, <laughs> I'll think of it in a second. Wool blanket. Yeah, those are probably the best bang for the buck if you only can bring one blanket with you. Put it over the top of your sleeping bag. Got all my coffee makings, because that's essential. Fishing gear. Fishing poles, never leave without a towel, according to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's the number one thing. Let's go ahead and turn on our electronics here. Got a couple of backup chargers and a radio, though I still need to program it. Entertainment, some movies if I get bored on the long crossing. Some clothes, got the canvas sides and back so I can turn this into a tent. And yeah, we're just leaving right from the mothership slash Beagle Barge. guys so we're gonna stop at the misery river and make some lunch and stretch my legs and i would say walk wavy around but i keep <laughs> instinctually <laughs> reflexively looking around and she's not here it's so weird so but yeah we're gonna we're gonna make a stop all right guys well so far this is working pretty good you can see I've just I sit in the helm seat and you know just turn the what normally would be the the passenger seat area I just kind of turned it into like a little workstation you know a little kitchen right now and I'm cooking myself some breakfast and you know I'm really trying on this trip to take my time and kind of like prepare meals and not just have like ready-made stuff and you know packaged stuff and you know I chopped up a half a potato and I'm gonna make some eggs and I'm gonna make one of these fillets that I got a couple days ago and yeah I'm just gonna try to like make every stage of this more meaningful and and try really hard to get this being in a hurry thing out of out of my system we've all got it you know the world does it to us um, but I've noticed it over a couple days if you just kind of get into a mode and you retrain your you know, what do they call it? <laughs> your algorithm or something, your personal algorithm. Um, you can start to calm down. This is how, this is what works for me. So, you know, tell me what you guys think. But, uh, yeah, it's only the first day. It's only really the first few hours of the trip. But I've done this enough times now that I'm, I can kind of, like, you know, prompt it along and make it happen faster. At least I think I can. <laughs> All right, guys. going to make some breakfast here. And then we're going to figure out how to get out of the mouth of the Misery River because it's... I'm going to probably have to walk it out. I'll put my shorts on and just walk the boat out. I've done it before, so... Okay, stay tuned. Okay. 
Okay, guys, let's see how we can do this here. Well guys, it took most of the day, but we got up to the Houghton Hancock Channel. Just going into the north entrance right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and go down to Houghton Hancock and stay on the break wall tonight. And uh, top off the tanks and get a couple more things at the store before we head over to Isle Royal, which is about 50 miles that way. Good morning guys and gals. We got up early this morning and we're just about to the entrance or exit of the canal and then it'll be open water for about 50 miles to Siskwit Bay. That's usually where I go first when I get to Isle Royal. It's in the middle of the island and it's on the south side or the, I guess you call it east side. And it's just kind of a place, you know, it usually takes all day for me to get there because I go over so slow to try to save gas. I really try to not have to buy gas in Isle Royal for a couple of reasons. One is, of course, it's expensive. But the other is you have to go to one of the two populated areas, you know, um, Rock Harbor or Windigo. And I just don't want to go there unless I have to. We might still pop into one because this boat only carries 20, it, the gas, the fuel cell is 24 gallons. I have another five gallons, so it's gonna be tight. I might have to stop into Rock Harbor or, or Wendigo and get some fuel. But I've got a couple ideas, but um, I just don't ever wanna get like below half when I'm over in that remote of an area. So we'll see, we're gonna find out. But uh, also, uh, so yeah, 50 miles from the entrance. We're coming up to it right now. And it's just gonna be a slow six mile an hour crossing. I hope the lake's in good shape. I'm kind of seeing it right now and looks like it's got some one or two footers out there, but you never know when you're halfway across what it's gonna do, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, I did look at the wave and weather forecast and it, it was diminishing conditions or you know improving conditions. So, so yeah, okay guys, enough rambling. I'm gonna turn the phone around and start showing you guys whatever I can on an open water crossing. There's not, it's like a big desert, you know, you get out far from land and usually there's a, there's a, you know, a section for a couple hours where you can neither see the mainland or, you know, Michigan or Isle Royal, you know, so it's kind of like you're really, you lose touch with land and it can be an eerie feeling, but it's kind of a cool feeling too, so. Okay, guys, I said I was going to shut up. We'll talk to you soon. Well, guys, I was just sitting here <laughs> zoning out, and I look back behind me, and there's a freighter, a Laker. Awesome. A few moments later. Okay, guys. So this is something I do. It's kind of a tradition when I'm doing these big water crossings is I stop roughly halfway and I just turn the motor off. I just kind of take it in with no, no motor sound. 
I'm 25 miles away from Isle Royal. I can see it so well now. I probably the camera probably doesn't pick it up yet, but I can even see the little nook, you know, the entrance to Sisquit Bay. And I'm, now I'm able to aim towards that instead of use my compass or the chart plotter. And I can still see the Keweenaw too, um, going up that direction. So still see land <clears throat> when you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you launch from Ontonagon, it's 80 miles across instead of 50. And there is a, a point of about 10 miles or so where you can't see any land either direction, even on a really clear day. That's what I found. So it's kind of cool, you know, that like you're never really out of sight of land on this crossing. The shortest distance from the Keweenaw to Isle Royal is from uh, Eagle Harbor, and that's 44 miles. And from the entrance to the Houghton Hancock Canal, it's 50. So, so that's what we're doing today. But how about if I just turn the phone around and I'll just kind of try to share with you guys what it's like to be kind of out here in the middle of Lake Superior. The conditions are kind of improving. The waves are getting a little smaller as the day goes on. Looks like I'll probably get there around 6 o'clock tonight, which is nice. A couple hours of daylight to kind of get situated. I'm aiming towards Wright Island, which there's a little fish camp. I've been there before. That's a good place to kind of recover from the, the long trip over. And it, there's also good fishing around there too. So I'm going to fill the fill the Yeti with fillets because I'm out. So yeah, guys, a little 16-foot Hughescraft Sportsman's getting the job done. No problem. I'm doing about six miles an hour over to save gas. Well, there she is, guys and gals. Isle Royal. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a second and try to explain this to you. So, we are coming up on the entrance to Sisquith Bay, and there, it has a reef. So I don't know if you can see that, but the reef is like right there. And right now it's around 575 feet of water. We're about two miles out from the entrance. And I don't know if you can see these numbers, but there are some spots that come up within two feet of the surface. It is like threading a needle to get into this bay. Okay guys, so I'm making my approach. We've got the red can there. We've got the two green cans. Where are they at? Right there. I'm gonna try to thread the needle here. Red right return. Getting close to the reef. Kinda tells us, I think those two cans tell us where to come in. We're still in 60 feet of water. And then there's another green can right over there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, we're up in the 50s. This is where it starts to get nerve wracking because look how quick it's coming up. I'm just gonna aim for the green can. Holy cow. pillars down there. 17. 21. Come on. Keep me away from those ones and twos and I'll be fine. Okay, I think we're clear. We're into Sisquit Bay. Going back down in the 40s. Yeehaw. Let's go to Wright Island. Fifty miles, open water crossing, in a sixteen foot boat. Guys, there's a there's a moose here. 
going to see if I can get some footage for you. I saw a moose right when I came in a few years ago when I came here. Taking a bath. Man, I just love this spot. This is one of my favorite places on earth right here. How often, here's a question for you guys. How often do you go to places where your phone doesn't work and there's no easy modern distractions. I think those places are getting harder and harder to find. Phones don't work over here in Isle Royal. And I find myself <laughs> having to be honest with myself how much I use my phone as a distraction as kind of a connection to the world. And it I think it's going to take a day or two for me to <clears throat> adjust but uh, I will. I brought some books, brought some DVDs and a little player. And I'm going to try to read and just kind of return to source, you know, return to self. I think no matter how much we tell ourselves that, you know, oh, I could just stop watching TV. I could just stop the Internet. I could just put it all down. I think we're all pretty much addicted, including me, so I'm starting to remember that's one of the things I love about Isle Royal is that, like, all you have is what you bring with you. That's it. Food, fuel, entertainment, distractions. So, yeah, guys, sun's going down, and I'm settling in. Here on Wright Island. Sure wish I knew what the story was in this camp. Maybe I'll maybe I'll figure it out. If, if anyone feels like it, <clears throat> Wright W R I G H T <clears throat> Wright Island in Siskwit Bay. This beautiful ideal. I mean, I know why they built a camp here. This is the this is the most protected anchorage I think anyone could ever get. I don't think a, a storm could ever even get in here. It would have to come in from that direction and then the mainland, you know, blocks that one and the rest of it's just like a big horseshoe. So it's it's an amazing anchorage. So whoever built a camp here uh, found a really good spot. So Okay guys, I'm going to settle in. I'm going to put the phone down for the night and uh, get my stuff situated. I just made some dinner and make myself a drink. Maybe watch a movie, maybe read some, read a book. And uh, I'll get back with you guys tomorrow. So I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Even though you're not watching it yet because I haven't made the video. <laughs> but when you do, thanks for watching. So, okay, guys. See you later.